Hi Johnny, what's happening man? You're looking a bit down. Hi Dave, yeah. I just can't get my head around the core privileges for Cisco Unified Communication Manager. Well I have exactly the right solution for you. It's called Fast Lane Pit Stop Training. Follow me man. Hello, my name is Karen Whitaker. Welcome to another episode of Fast Lane's Pit Stop Training. If you, like Tony, would like to learn a bit more about core privileges in Cisco Unified Communication Manager, whether it be for exam purposes or live deployment scenarios, Dave Luby, our Unified Communications expert, will lead you for the next few minutes. Welcome, Dave. Hi, Karen. Hi, everybody. What I'm going to cover next is one of the core topics in core privileges, namely understanding and implementing class of service using partitions and calling search bases. Firstly, let's have a look at the process of making a call on Communications Manager. Like any telephone system, it contains a dial plan. The dial plan contains reachable numbers. In the case of Communications Manager, we have three types of numbers in a dial plan. Firstly, we have directory numbers. These are used for internal numbers. We can assign these to phone lines, call pickup groups, voicemail ports, meet me conference numbers, call part ranges, etc. Secondly, we have route patterns. Route patterns are used to make external calls. These can be assigned to gateways to allow us to make calls out to the PSDN or trunks for external voice over IP calls. Lastly, we have translation patterns. Translation patterns are used to manipulate dial digits before a call is routed. Here we have an IP phone that dials 2003. The digits that it dials are sent to the digit analysis process on Communications Manager. The digit analysis process then searches through the dial plan to find the best match for the number that you dialed. In this case, it matches directory number 2003, which then causes a call setup to be initiated to the telephone that has extension 2003 on it. In this example, we want to restrict Tony's IP phone from making international calls. However, in this case, we're not able to do that because Tony's IP phone has full access to the dial plan, including the two route patterns that he needs to make international calls. To solve this problem, we will create what's called partitions. If I said I was going to partition your hard drive, I would mean I would be segmented up into possibly C drive, D drive, and E drive. In the case of Communications Manager, when we create partitions, we're actually segmenting up the dial plan. The original dial plan is called the null or none partition. If you do not assign numbers to a specific partition, they're said to be in the null or none partition. Numbers in the null or none partition are reachable by all devices. Firstly, I will create partition A and assign that to the directory numbers and the root patterns that do not include international access. All other numbers will be in the null partition. Next, I will create partition B and assign that to the international root patterns. And lastly, partition C and assign that to the translation patterns. The next step in the process is to create what's called a calling search base. A calling search base contains a list of partitions that digit analysis is allowed to look at when you initiate a call. In the case of Tony, Tony's calling search base contains partition A plus C. When Tony tries to make an international call, he will send the digits to the digit analysis process. The digit analysis process will look at Tony's calling search base and thus search partition A and partition C but skip partition B. This will mean Tony will get a reorder tone and no longer be able to call international numbers. If we look at another example, in the case here of Karen's phone, Karen's calling search base contains partition A plus B plus C. This will mean Karen can call all numbers in the dial plan, including the international numbers. Partitions can be seen as a collection of directory numbers, root patterns, and translation patterns that are grouped together and made equally reachable. The partition a number is in controls its accessibility from other devices, or in other words, who can call it. All numbers in the null partition are reachable by all devices. All numbers in partition A are only accessible by devices that have a calling search base containing partition A assigned to them. Or in other words, the partition that your telephone number is in 
controls who can call you. A calling search base is an ordered list of partitions. Digit analysis is allowed to search through when that device initiates a call. The calling search base controls what numbers an entity or a device can call. For example, the calling search base assigned to my telephone controls who I can call. Calling search bases are not just assigned to phones. They can be assigned to any entity that can initiate a call. For example, you can assign a calling search base to a phone at a line level or the device level, a gateway, a trunk, a translation pattern, etc. In the case of the gateway and the trunk, the calling search space that you assign dictates the rights that any incoming calls from the PSDN or from other clusters have. If you do not assign the gateways or trunks a calling search space, all incoming calls from the PSDN or from other clusters will only have rights to call numbers in the null partition. We can also use the analogy of locks and keys. The locks corresponding to the partitions, which control who can access our directory numbers, and the keys corresponding to calling search bases, which control which locks we can open, or in other words, which directory numbers we have access to. If we have a look at phone 1, its directory number is in the blue partition, phone 2's directory number is in the red partition, phone 3 is in the yellow partition, phone 4's directory number has not been assigned to a partition, in other words it's in the null partition, and phone 5 has been assigned the yellow partition. Now, if we have a look at the effective rights of Phone 1, Phone 1's calling search base contains the red and yellow keys. Therefore, it's allowed to call the directory numbers of Phone 2, Phone 3, everybody can call Phone 4, and Phone 5. Phone 2 has been assigned the blue and yellow calling search bases, which mean it can call Phone 1, Phone 3, again, everybody can call Phone 4, and Phone 5. Phone 3 has been assigned the red calling search base, which means it can call Phone 2 and Phone 4. Phone 4 has been assigned the blue calling search base, which means it can call Phone 1 and Phone 4. And lastly, Phone 5 has been assigned no calling search base, which means it can only call Phone 4 because it's in the null partition. In other words, if you have no calling search base, you only have rights to call numbers in the null partition. Next, we will look at calling search space partition order relevance. When digit analysis searches through the dial plan to find the best match, it will first look for numbers that have been assigned to specific partitions. Secondly, it will then look for numbers that have no partition assigned, in other words, that exist in the null partition. You can have multiple identical numbers in the dial plan, but they must be in different partitions. Digit analysis will find the best match if there are multiple best matches it will pick the number whose partition appears first in the calling search space. Here we can see that the directory number 3001 exists three times in the dial plan. In partition Chicago, pointing at phone 2-1, in partition San Jose, pointing at phone 1-1, and in partition Atlanta, pointing at phone 3-1. When the phone dials 3001, it will match the phone in Chicago because Chicago appears first in the calling search base above San Jose. It will not take Atlanta into consideration because the Atlanta partition is not in the phone's calling search space. And finally, as mentioned earlier, we can assign a calling search base to the line level of a phone but also at the device level of a phone. The calling search base of the line from which the call is placed is considered first. Then the device level calling search base is then added. So the phone's effective calling search base consists of the line calling search base plus the device level calling search base. However, because the line calling search base is considered first, it will always have priority over the device level calling search base. Here we have a phone with both line and device level calling search base. This phone dials 3001. The line calling search base and the device calling search base are concatenated with the line calling search base on top of the device level calling search base. The root pattern 300x in the San Jose partition is eliminated because the directory numbers 3001 in the Chicago partition and 3001 in the Atlanta partition are a better match. 
The best match then turns out to be the 3001 in Chicago. This is because the Chicago partition is in the line calling search base, which always takes priority.